Hello, Mav Mind Collective, and welcome to another episode of the Hypno Sales Show. My name is Maverick Garner, and today we have Michael McGinnis. All right, Michael. Woo! Yeah, Michael McGinnis. Who is Michael McGinnis? Oh my gosh, who isn't Michael McGinnis? I am Michael McGinnis. I am based out of St. Louis. First of all, Fabric, thank you so much for having me on your podcast. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. It's my pleasure. And so I just wanted to start out today's podcast with you maybe sharing a little bit of a, the story, like your story, like how you got into becoming an SE and so, like, how did you choose that? Yeah. So Maverick, funny you asked that question because I, I often think I'm like, how did I get here? But the way I got here actually is this, is I, I have been in, I've been in IT for, did the math today. Over 20 years. Been in security for about 15 years. I've been in cyber sales side for about eh, roughly around eight years now. Mm -hmm. And it, it it's, it's a big difference between the two, but I really I I've just I, I'm I've been so enjoying being on this side of it because I'm all about customer success. Mm -hmm. But I didn't realize I was about that because this is the greatest type of job you could ever have. It is totally. And and how did you get in? How did you get into it? Did you uh, just like decide you wanted to do it, or did you just get like asked to do it, like and kind of fell in by accident or something? Or? <laughs> well, it's kind of ironic. Um, so there was a security incident in my company that I used to work for, and well, let's put it this way: I figured out how to use the product in less than forty-eight hours, and they're like, "Wow." You know how to use this product very well. Do you want to sell it? I go, sure. And they're like, cool. Go see Maverick. <laughs> That's how it happened. I'm not even, by the way, really? I'm not joking. They I didn't know like, that story. I didn't know that Yeah, story. yeah, yeah. No, no, no. You don't understand. I was a, this is a true story. They said, all right, great. Um, you're hired. We're going to send you to Maverick to go get trained. And I was like, Okay, Who, Maverick, the guy from Top Gun. Did you? You no, didn't think that no, was a different yeah. Maverick. It was this Maverick. <laughs> that awesome. one right there. <laughs> that's awesome. I didn't know that. I didn't know that's exactly what happened. I just no, know no, that no. I remember, that's I remember, literally what happened. I remember you were part of the like we. I was training you and a few others, but I remember you were very eager to learn some of the Mad Mind techniques. I'm just curious if you've still do you still use some of the Mad Mind things now? And oh my gosh, Maverick! Really? <laughs> oh, I if it wasn't for you, like I would not be where I'm at. Oh, that's so nice to you to say that. <laughs> but, but, but actually, I use your techniques. I have probably used your techniques six times, six times today alone. Oh, really? At least. At least. Just because, and it's because, see, what's your favorite ones? Like, what's the ones you find that are most useful? Oh, all right. My favorite technique is where you show up into a demo and you say, hey, and they're, they're so gung-ho about the product they saw before. Yeah. You say to them, look, I want you to forget about that product for 60 minutes, 55 minutes, 54, was just a numerical time. Right. And then getting in and don't bring them up again. It's then show your product. Right. It is so powerful. <laughs> it, it, it is so powerful that it is so compelling when they do that. People that were already checked out in a demo, all, all of a sudden they're sitting up like, wait, I got I get 58 minutes. I got to listen to this. I can do that. Right. Cool. Because you, you use the numeric number and you create the amnesia. You're creating amnesia is what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, but you, forget but, about the other product or whatever. It, it, the, the crazy thing, Mav, is this. These people, uh, the customers are getting so much value out of doing that. Mm -hmm. you, you've said it before. It's an inherent nature of people where they, they kind of have that predisposition when they come into a demo. All right, I've seen, you know, product XYZ do this. If this company could do it, big deal. They already do it. So right. 
the benefit behind doing that, it resets everybody's mind. And they're like, hey, maybe they have a different approach to what we're trying to solve. And then we could show as a SE, yeah. I can actually step up and overstep what the product is that we're competing against and right. say, hey, I'm not going to show you value. I'm going to prove you value. Yeah. And that's the key. Proof versus value or show. Right. Say, hey, hey, I want to prove you value as opposed to just showing some value. Showing something. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it, yeah exactly. And, and so uh, you're hitting up another good point also about the number, the numeric. It's got to be a numeric value to distract the conscious mind because the conscious mind knows about time. So you give it a time. Now, I noticed you said 58 or 55 minutes. That's another technique. So do you do that too also? Like you just pick, pick odd times to like give to them or something? or You know, I, honestly, Bab, I, and I've actually gotten kind of aggressive with this. Oh, really? I, okay. I, oh, yeah. No, I really have. I actually pivoted off of give me 58 minutes, give me 60 minutes, whatever. I've actually gotten down to the seconds where I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> I've actually okay. said, hey, give me 59 minutes and 30 seconds or 20. <laughs> actually, I don't usually use round numbers. Yeah. But I try to keep it around, you know, an odd number. So I'll be like, yeah, give me 59 minutes and 29 seconds. That's all I'm asking for you. It, it, forget about it, man. It's awesome. Yeah, and, and, it, and it, what's their it, reaction? It, is, they, they, it gets their attention, right? They're just like, what? They don't understand. You're breaking the pattern, right? Well, you're breaking a pattern, but I, I, I want to be very clear about this. It's not like you're breaking the pattern to snake a sales deal. Yeah. It, it, the, the whole point behind breaking that pattern Mm -hmm. It's because they've they've heard messaging that is don't get me wrong it might be the right message that they need to hear yeah but when you break that pattern they're hearing your message and as an se it helps snap that that natural mindset that is focused in on oh this product's going to solve all my it's the easy button hold on. Let me hit the easy button. Yeah. The benefit behind doing that is it shows the customer you care. Yeah. Because if you're an SE and you don't care about your customers, don't be an SE. Yeah. Don't, just get out of here. I don't. I. I don't need it. You. You don't need to be rep or representing whoever you are. Customer focus, and that's why you have to do that. Because if you don't do it, they're gonna miss. They're gonna miss your messaging. Yep, that's right. They will. They'll totally miss it. And, and it's funny you bring up you bring up another aspect here. You're talking about from being an SE, like doing the demo and things. But like, but you're also working with reps too. There's always like a rep you're working with on the call with you. Typically, um, I'm just curious how you adapt to like working with different reps. Do they ever notice that you use techniques like this? Do they ever ask you about it? Do you share it or like how do you how do you adapt to working with the different types of because they never sell the same. They're never doing it the same, right? Right. <laughs> In my experience, they don't. Oh, well, guess what? Similar experience. So, rep, so reps dealing with different – every time you deal with a rep, I always look at it this way. Mm -hmm. they, they have a set e – either they have a PowerPoint slide or they have, you know, their own cadence. I, I My best relationships with reps have been where – I've gained their trust. It does not happen ever, ever immediately. Yeah. It takes you proving value to the rep. As a new SE with a new rep, I don't care if you've been at that organization for five years, 10 years, one month, if you you are doing when you start off as a new SE, you have to realize you're not just selling the customer, which obviously you're always doing, but you're not really selling. You're you're providing a solution to the customer. Yeah, you are always selling to the rep. Oh, okay. I have gotten reps to the point where they don't even do decks. They're just like, here's my SE. 
Let me know so, when so, you want pricing. Okay, let me make sure I'm clear on this. You're saying they don't even bring up a slide deck and present a slide deck on a, they just say, here you go, and they turn it over to you when it, on, a, on a demo meeting or whatever. And guess what happens on every one of those calls? I've er already earned my rep's trust. I that see. rep, that rep, yeah. if he's confident to do that, mm -hmm. has already earned that customer's trust. Interesting. He's like, look, my, my, look guys, I trust, you guys trust me. I trust this person. Right. Interesting. Well, uh, all right. So, so, uh, I'm just curious also, you're making me think of something else because I've worked with lots of reps over my career and I know, you know, I know you have too. Okay. Um, and sometimes I've worked, worked with reps that maybe are newer to the role. Like they have been sales reps for very long. And then mm -hmm. I've had others that are very well, like they've been doing it for 25 years, you know? Um, do you notice a difference between two? How do you, how do you, what's the difference between like working with a veteran rep and then someone that maybe has maybe been doing it a year or two, it might be their first job and like that. How do you, right. how do you approach that, um, that situation, those situations? What's the difference between them and stuff? So the difference between a veteran rep and a fresh out of school type of rep is very interesting actually um so i will say this that the the ones that have been veterans they show up with they've already built a relationship yeah so like they're i'll walk into an account we've known each other for 10 years and we don't need to oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. and they kind of coast by on that because mm -hmm. they've built up that by the way, some of your audience might, I doubt this, but they might be like, what do you mean by Rolodex? They rely on the Rolodex. <laughs> yes. And by the way, for all you Mavline people, the Rolodex is your contact list on your iPhone. That's right. I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. Thanks for the clarification. <laughs> no, 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 no. Mav, you're older than me. So actually, I, I, you know, I have no excuses for that one. But I, I, the older reps are, you know, from a different generation. But a lot of them rely on pure relationship. They're relationship driven. Right. If it's not a relationship, the newer ones I've seen coming out in the field are more actually aggressive, which oh, is really? interesting. No, no, I would say, and it is interesting because I've, I've noticed that they're more aggressive, but in a good way. Assertive, they're more assertive. They're way more assertive. They don't, they're not about buying the customer breakfast, lunch, dinner, whatever. Don't get me wrong, they do, but they don't depend on it. It's not they're about that. It's not about that. Yeah. Yeah. Their dependency, though, is solution based. They're, they're like, all right, I've read about you on the news. All right. Here's how we can solve you from ever being on the news again. <laughs> I think that the newer reps versus the older reps, the way you handle them is you got to be yourself. You, 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 you've got to show value to both of them. Don't get me wrong. You got to reel in the newer reps I mean, as much as you can, but you don't want to do it too much. Let them do their thing. And I wish you luck. Going to an older rep saying, Hey, you know what? Your sales technique, by the way, which you've been doing since I graduated from high school. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, you need to adapt to me. You can't do that. Yeah. You gotta, you, you gotta be able to adapt to them, older ones. Yeah. And you gotta be able to bring in with the other one, the younger general, you know, the younger, uh, the newer, the newer ones. ones, the newer, yeah, ones. the newer ones. That are newer. Actually, not the younger. Yeah, I appreciate that. Not even the younger ones. The newer, newer one. one. I, I've seen every age level be a new rep. Right. Older than me. Heck, my I've had a rep. You know, in the last few years, that was, I think, three years older than me. And I'm, you know, not a young cat. <laughs> you just got to be able to adapt to the old school and mold the new 
reps. Do they do they take your coaching typically the newer ones or or uh, I mean do you you coach them right if, if they need it? It sounds like, that's what I hear you saying is that you want to yeah. kind so, of bring them. You know, Maverick, that's a great. Actually, no, I'm not going to say that's a great question because I'm not going to objectify your questions because it's a mad mind trick. Yeah, that's don't fall for it. I taught. I, I taught you, you not to set do me that. up. You <laughs> probably set me up. Good and, job. Good job. <laughs> I caught myself, and I catch myself all the time. Like, stop quantifying questions. All right, let's get back to what we we're talking about. So I've had so with new reps. It's very easy with new reps because you, you as, as a veteran SE, as a new SE, if you can show value, they appreciate value very much, very quickly. Yeah. Because they're new to being in the sales field. Veteran reps, yeah. I'm going to be honest with you, they're amazing. They are that like their next level honest to god if you provide value to a veteran rep you're a rock star se yeah. to get to that level i would say this you need about eh, quite a few sessions of you selling yourself to them yeah okay. new reps uh -huh. sell themselves to you I see. Okay. That's interesting. Like a little daisy chain kind of a, yeah. kind of an idea. Do you ever have to negotiate with reps at all? I, I know I've had two over the years, but do you find yourself negotiating uh, with them? Like uh, maybe regarding what you're going to do for the demo, what, how you're going to handle the customer in a situation or do you ever have to negotiate with them at all? Or, or do you just, if the rep says do this, you just try to figure out a way to, to your point of like trying to adapt and do what they, what you want what they want because they're the ones that are leading the show, right? They're the ones that are, right. they're, they're next on the line more than yours if it doesn't work out. Right. So totally um, agree. But do you have to, have to negotiate with them at all or no? Well, of course, of course yeah. you, you have to, I mean, you have to, and, and, and just to the other SEs that are out there watching Mad Mind series, I, I, I Maverick made a very good point. Um, their neck is way more on the line than yours. And, it, as an SE, you can provide value outside of making your number. Yeah. There's things such as key business objectives. There's things as support. There's things as PF. There's a lot more value for an SE than a rep. So you have to understand something. Reps are very, very focused on sales. So you have to help them. And that's true. I can't stress that enough. Whenever a rep is on top of you, ever, somebody's on top of them. Yeah, that's it's, right. It, 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 they aren't going to get on top of you unless somebody's on top of them. That's so right. never take what they're saying personally. Right, correct. Now, when it comes to negotiating Maverick, for a demo, if a rep comes to me and they say, Hey, I need you to do X, Y, Z. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna appreciate that because I'm gonna assume that they did discovery. Right now, if I'm on the same call with the rep and they're trying to hit a number, yeah, like, like you know, let's just throw random numbers. They, they have to hit a hundred thousand dollars, but in your discovery call, I only found forty thousand, fifty thousand. We'll, we'll just cut yeah. in fifty thousand yeah. dollars. You know what, Maverick? I'm going to do a mad mantra. Let's say it's fifty thousand five hundred and twenty-eight dollars and sixty-four cents <laughs> of value in that freaking deal. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to push back on that rep. I'm going to be like, you know what? Here's the thing. There's only fifty thousand dollars worth of value to the customer. If the rep comes back to me and says, "You need to find a hundred thousand dollars," or I know there's not there. I'm going to tell the rep, look, you need to find, you, you need to go in your pipeline, yeah. pull stuff up, brains, cold call, do your, you know, do your thing. I'm not, my reputation is way more important than anything they're selling. That's all that matters to me. My yeah. reputation. Don't get me wrong. I love big paychecks. 
Sure. But guess what? I've been on deals that were huge. They came up for renewal. And the customer said, and I'll never forget this. The, the, like this one, I, I didn't sleep for at least two days. Regard, like no caffeine. I just couldn't fall asleep for two days when a customer said, I don't trust you. Oh, man. Like, and you know why? I trusted somebody that was like, look, just find a little bit more value out of it. And the customer said to me, and like, it's like, like it chokes me up. I'm like, you don't trust me? Yeah. Like, I will never, ever do that again. I, my reputation is one thing, but my trust, customer trust me is the most important thing. I am not there to sell them, I'm there to help them. Right. So, so with that said, what, what would you say is the number one skill that an SE should have then? I mean, they, I, it's obvious. I mean, based on that answer, it sounds like to me that you're very clear and very uh, adamant about being trusted as a trusted advisor, a oh, trusted uh, expert, and that it, it lasts, it goes beyond the meeting you're in having right now. It's about having sustained relationship with that customer because you may be even in a different job later. And you might end up talking to them again. At least it's happened to me a lot where I, customers follow me around. They contact me again later. I'm working at a new place, but they still, it's about the relationship, right? Because they trusted me the first time. They're going to trust me again. So I relate to what you're saying. But what, but what do you think the number one skill is? That if you could pick one skill only that all SEs should have, what would, you, what would you say it is? Accountability. Accountability. Accountability is the biggest thing. Why is that? Uh, all right. Customer open, you, you sell a customer a solution and they have a support issue. They ping you. Mm -hmm. You don't hang the phone up. Like, hey, I know X, I, I know Jim Bob over in support. I'm going to get this taken care of for you. I, had a, I, I, I actually have a customer that has followed me. Actually, I have four customers. Hold on. Let me hold on. I had to pivot on that one. I have four customers that have followed me from my first company to my current company. Really? And yeah, because they know they can trust me. If there's an issue, make sure it's, it's, it's taken care of. Okay. And life isn't about saying you're sorry. Don't say you're sorry for things you can't control. Yeah. I appreciate your understanding. I appreciate this. I, you know, if you say you're sorry too much, I'm going to be honest with you, you lost. Because if it gets to the point where you're saying, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. you failed. Interesting. So, so, um, so you're, so what I hear you saying is that if I'm an SC, I should, or even a sales man, a sales rep, I should not be saying I'm sorry to the customer because of, because it comes across uh, insincere. I just want to make sure I'm understanding like what you're meaning. No, no, no. no. Saying I'm sorry, you're a lot of say I'm sorry. Um, trust me, I'm married. Yeah. I tell my wife today I was sorry. Let's see. She got home at five. It's nine. It's four hours. I probably told her I'm sorry at least 15 times. Yeah. How many of those do you think she cares about? How many of those do you think that solved a problem? Zero. Zero. L yeah. Literally zero. You know why? Because I've diluted sorries. Oh, I see. I see. I have diluted it. I have ruined it. And she hears sorry as much as I is me saying sorry to her. Yeah. Means as much as me saying hello to her. I see. And okay. The reason the reason it's like that is because I've told her I'm sorry so many times. That's my wife. Yeah. Now imagine a customer. They're not. They they have zero zero emotional connect, connection to you. They don't care. I see what you're saying. They they, they might be upset if something happened to you. They might. Actually, no, no, it, I no, I get what you're saying. It's because it's a business context, not yeah, a not a personal it, context. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
from a personal context, I diluted this before my first kit, before we were married, I probably diluted the saris. Yeah. With a customer, guess how long it takes to dilute that? Two. I've done the math, Maverick. I haven't shared the math with you. I see. You say you're sorry two times to a customer. The third time doesn't mean anything. They don't care. Anything. They don't care. So what do you say right. instead? Cool. Go, go back. Go back to what you, what do you say instead? Then if you don't, if if you let's say you did make a mistake or something, you don't say I'm sorry. What do you say? What do you do? How do you handle it then? The way I have always approached it. Let for you know what? Hey Maverick, let's just say for example, I promised you an email today. Yep. But I don't send it till Friday. Okay. The first things out of my mouth in that email aren't going to be, I am sorry about this. It doesn't work because yeah. they're going to see, I am sorry. And they're, they don't care. Yeah. I started off with, I appreciate your, or I appreciate your patience in me sending you this. Okay. Okay. I see. I wanted to make sure I had the correct information. I wanted to make sure this, I wanted to make sure that, and you make it, um, I can't stress this enough. Unless it is actually your fault where you unplug a server or you yeah. trip their grandmother, it doesn't matter. Unless it's actually your fault, don't apologize. Okay. Okay. But with that said, you can acknowledge there was a situation, but you don't have to. When you say, I'm sorry, you're taking ownership of the whole Oh, I see. I see. Issue. If you say I'm sorry because let's say a failed upgrade, you never got on that call. You had no you didn't even know what was going on. And finally, after 15 tickets and all this stuff, the customer finally comes to you and says, Hey Maverick, or hey Michael, we've had a ticket open for three weeks and there's we're not getting anywhere with it. The first words out of my mouth is of, I'm sorry, everything just came down onto you. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Okay. It, so you need to say, I totally understand your frustration. I guess, but here's, here's the thing. I'm on board. You can trust me because I've proven myself to you. I will take care of from here. Now, at that point, you're owning the situation, but it's not your fault. Right, right. So everything yeah. that happened before is on somebody else. Now, going forward, it's on you. But at that point, you can be, you can be honest. You can be totally honest. Yeah. Think about it. It could be, oh, your caps lock's been down the entire time. Oh, my, it's in the past. It's literally in the past. I figured it out. You had your caps lock down, whatever. Guess what? I'm here for you. It's cool. And when yeah. they come to you, guess what's going to happen? A lot of support issues are, are, are like that. I yeah. mean, they're, they're seriously like that. When a customer comes to me and they say, Oh, I can't believe I have my caps locked down. Oh, dude, let me tell you a story about me when I had my caps locked down. And guess what happens? They don't care. Everything's done. You're going to get 10 star reviews. Support's going to get 10 star reviews. And which, by the way, always take care of your support guys. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Always. Those That's good advice. Guys, those are, they are working a thankless job. It is. You're right. You're totally correct. I'm glad to hear you say that. So, so I'll just, I just, I'm curious if you were to go back to the younger version of you, maybe back whenever, you, like, like, you know, when you first started becoming an SE, like, you know, saying this is what I want to do, what advice would you give that SE now that you've been doing it? And you're like SE of the quarter, like you, and you've been a principal now. And like, you, like you've, you've been pretty successful as an SE now for a while. I what, just got SE the other day. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, press big club. Another, another, <laughs> another award. That's so awesome. Yeah, keep getting them. Congratulations. Congratulations. Right, so, so if you were to go back to um, like the very first younger self version of you becoming an SE, what, you know, what would you tell, what would you tell yourself? First thing I would tell myself is this. I don't care. His name is Maverick. The guy's a freaking rock star. 
Uh, no, seriously. Over, seriously. Uh, hold on, hold on. I'm not done. I'm, I, you asked me a question. I'm trying to be okay. I would say, I don't care. His name is Maverick. Don't worry about the Maverick thing. He really has some good stuff. And honestly, I figured that out about five minutes in, but I would want to get that first five minutes in. No, actually, but for real, uh, my first thing I would ever tell myself if I was a younger SE, I, and I've actually told this because to, I have junior SEs that are under me mm -hmm. um, that, that reach out to me. The number one thing I always tell them, it's all about trust. And you don't get trust. You earn trust. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it's MavMind. It doesn't matter if it's whoever it is. Yeah. You own everything. You will go into organizations with SEs that are like have been there for six years and have 15 different reps. And there's a reason why. Because they've earned every single customer. If that if that SE left, yeah. those customers are gone. Yeah. I would tell myself. Stop. Stop trying. Don't worry about demoing. Don't worry about this. Don't worry about that. Worry about the relationship. Mm. Focus in on that. I, every new, every job I go to, and I get my pipeline, I get all my customers. First thing I do, Maverick, you want to know what I do? I'm waiting for you to oh, yes. No I, no, I was just I, waiting. I was so waiting and did breath. See, I did a math mind trick. You totally, I you totally, mind yes, trick. you totally did it to me. Boom. I, I math mind you. <laughs> You're a good student. That totally worked on me. That totally worked I on totally me. I totally know Maverick. <laughs> you got to love that. You know what the first thing I do, Maverick? You know what, what I do? What is? What was the first thing you do? I log in and I look at their support history and see oh. what has happened in the past because I don't like surprises. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I like a surprise birthday party. I love it when, you know, like little surprise. Oh, my kids brought me a birthday cake home or whatever. I don't like it when customers are like, you didn't know this was happening. <laughs> I go into every single account. You know what I do every day? The first dashboard I look at in my SFDC. Is what my is it? Dashboard. And I look to see what customers may have opened up that, you know, cases. Yeah. Support could be at the conclusion. I always, it doesn't matter if it's clo closed, open, whatever. I contact my customers. I'm like, hey, look, are you, is everything working? Where were you at? Like, do you need me to, what do you need from me? Yeah. How can I facilitate your success? Yeah. That's all I'm about. Yeah. I'm so happy. It's the first time in my career I have tripped up Mav the Mav Mind. I threw Mav Mind off. You totally did. I'm very proud of you. I'm very proud of you. It's worth it. It was worth it. All right, very good. Well, I appreciate your time today. And um thanks for thanks for being uh you know a good sport about handling some of these questions I was kind of throwing at you. Um and I appreciate you uh, taking the time out of your busy evening with you should be could be with your kids and your family and your wife and everything saying I'm sorry to her over and over again. <laughs> but uh, I'm glad. No, I'm hey, glad hey, 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 can I just say real quick at the end of your podcast? Hey Maverick, I, I, honest God, I wouldn't be where I'm at with like you were the first person. You, literally, I was hired from the customer side. Yeah. And I'll never forget my boss when he said, oh, you haven't been in SC before? All right, well, we're going to send you to see Maverick. And oh, that's yeah. what I, I jokingly said. I go, the guy from Top Gun? Like, kind of like, <laughs> and no, Maverick, not I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie to you or to your audience because all I got is me yeah. as a reputation. I, I use your techniques daily, daily, every single call. Doesn't matter even if it's a customer. Yeah. It could be whoever I'm talking to. The way that you present this material is so critical. And I can't thank you enough for what you're doing. And I'm speaking on behalf of a, I'm going to be conservative and say over, uh, I'm speaking on behalf of the 1,500 SEs that you have trained. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And that's being conservative. That's true. Yeah, that's true. That's true. As being conservative, we all appreciate you, dude.
you've, you've helped my career. Thank you. Well, I appreciate that. And yeah, no, I appreciate you sharing that. And I really do thank you for your time. I couldn't have had a better guest on my very first inaugural HypnoSales show with with a guest and I'm hoping to do more. So if you're listening right now and you'd like to be a guest on the show, please DM me on LinkedIn and maybe you can be the next one. And um, until next time, I'll bid you all farewell. And thanks again, Michael. And we'll see you uh, again soon. Thanks, Maverick. I appreciate you.